All right, patch 5.1 notes. The reason I am a week late with this is because I was in LA and I didn't have time to even play the game. I was just busy uh, being at Riot and crying, I guess. Also, one more time, I am going to be giving away these packs. So keep an eye out for a link where you can join and maybe win one cool packs with a lot of the new cards, which is why I'm not allowed to give them away or show them just yet. Anyway. Yeah, I went through it yesterday a little bit, but now I'm going to do it in depth. Okay. Nerfs. We're going to start with the Elder Dragon nerfs. Hextech Prowess, Mountainous Vigor, Infernal Might. So the nerf here is that everything loses one health. This is a nerf that I found to be very strange. Simply because the issue to me felt like it was deathless. I never felt like, oh, you know, the Bandle Norodek got plus one health on their Burble or on their Broadmain. Now I lose. No, it was every single time because they got Deathless. So I, I don't know what this direction is. Um, I honestly think that one of Elder Dragon decks are still pretty playable just because of the, the origin where you get to play like six costs or more units that you wouldn't normally be able to play. Like Broadmain, like Burblefish, like the... Plaza Guardian, and that's all That's all fine. That's all still good. Yeah, one health, obviously it is a nerf, but Deathless is still there. So I don't think much has changed in this regard. Uh, if there is anything, I, I don't remember all the exact changes. I know there is more, like Sanin going to 7 mana. This is the type of stuff that will have a bigger impact. Just like cards from the origin actually being changed rather than them losing one health. Because, again... You don't really care about one health that much on a prop main or a burble fish. They're elusive. They're like engines that just remove stuff. It's good that they lose that health. They're a little bit easier to kill. But yeah, ultimately it's deathless. I felt that was the big issue. So Seinen goes from six to seven costs. This, this nerve is like, this nerve is just hilarious. I, oh. Is that? Okay, that should be good. So I think this nerve is pretty funny. <laughs> because this card was like not played at all until Elder Dragon, but it's an Ionia card, so I'm glad it did get nerfed. This card was insane though, because you could play it in in any deck and you'd be happy for the two draw. But sometimes you just had a wide enough board that that plus one plus one to your board also just won you the game randomly. Like think formidables, right? Giving giving your pretty wide formidable board plus one plus one, it doesn't even seem like it's that big a deal because you just give them one health. But then suddenly, it's like, okay, I was already wide. My units are already durable. He's just going to push it over the top. Then maybe Satan gets Deathless, draws two more cards. This was just disgusting on turn six. It's the same with Nora. Like, sometimes Elder Dragon Nora just high-rolled their portals. They had a board like, I don't, like hell, like three units. And then you give those units plus one, plus one. And suddenly, you're so far behind while they have all their pings and removal and broad main. And you just get overwhelmed. Also, they draw two cards. If we're talking about Elder Dragon, yes, this was a good nerf. But if Elder Dragon didn't exist... This would not be necessary. And that's kind of something that's a little bit worrisome for the future. As if things weren't worrisome for the future already for Runeterra. Simply because everything now needs to go through a sort of Elder Dragon check. There is a new 6 plus cost card releasing. A follower. Not a champion because champions are still tied to the region. But a follower. And you have to be like, oh, would this be broken with Deathless? Would this be broken in an Elder Dragon deck? Anything that makes those type of Elder Dragon piles better will have to be double-checked. And that might mean that even if a card would be perfectly balanced in Demacia or Shurima or whatever else, it might not be balanced in Elder Dragon. And I would hate for a card that is from Shurima to take some kind of like hit to their power because it's also available for Elder Dragon. I would be sad about that. Yeah, that's, that's how I feel about that. I think for saying that this is good because Elder Dragon, but I think it's unnecessary because Ionia. So we'll have to see what this means for the future. I think this could be like a, like, like a bad thing, a bad trend that might be continuing. Okay, and Race Fire Spitten. From 8-6 or 8-4 to 6-4. Good nerf. Necessary. I'm going to be completely honest though. Probably still a very good card. Probably still just everything you'd want from a card. Elder Dragon used this card just so they could play it on turn 5 or 6 to regain some board control because it deals two and then it's like a ginormous challenger. Sometimes it gets tough, right? This this is like the one time where this this does kind of mean that it's a pretty big nerf for a uh, fire spitter because sometimes if you got like tough on the fire spitter or just plus one HP from the 
impact or fearsome sometimes that meant you were able to take two traits or even three if the deal two was also able to kill something but usually you really didn't need eight hp or eight attack you only needed six so i think in that regard this is good enough in the invitational i was actually playing the fire spitter in a deck where you very much care about the attack on the fire spitter i'll, I'll have more details later with my deck list and stuff I ended up winning, so clearly, you know, I was kind of ahead of the curve. I kind of knew what I was doing. I knew what I was bringing. Fire Spitter was very good there, even at six attack. So I think this nerf does not really matter. Not Titanic anymore is actually a good point. That is important, mostly for the Volibear Elder Dragon deck. That is the only thing I can think of where it matters. It's not really possible to cheat it out a turn early anymore which was pretty good honestly that is a nerf i don't think elder dragon volibear needed a nerf at all but they did get one yeah it's a river nerf it is this is a river was very good though don't get me wrong so i in a way i'm glad that this could hit it really needed to get hit but it was mostly because of elder dragon once again with, with riven i think this was fine i really like i think it's so strange to think back and be like hey noxus has kind of been struggling this year uh, that's wild right because noxus has just always been the best region now, Noxus did have Samira at the start of the year, which was a little bit busted. They killed Samira, and then the region had absolutely nothing left. Then Fire Spitter came out, and then they were pretty good again, because Riven was able to just fully enable this card. But it's weird to think that Noxus has been struggling, unless they get, like, their one broken card to kind of carry the region. First Samira, and indirectly Pirate, then Fire Spitter, which enabled a bunch of decks. And Noxus was suddenly good, because of just these two cards. So I, I'm a little upset because i really like the fire spitter riven decks are some of my favorite decks it, but it was necessary i'll say that still think it's a good card still think it's easily good enough okay morgana goes from 8 to 10 this does not matter even a little bit yes she levels a little bit slower but you play morgana as a 5 mana 3 4 that makes your opponent pay 4 mana to get their unit back that's basically a 1 mana 3 4 lifesteal everything every piece of text on this card just has so much going for it it's dual region it's five mana and you need to, you can make your opponent pay four mana to get their unit back it has lifesteal it is a three four it is well it is a champion which is generally like a bad thing but sometimes he does level up and then you get a free win and i feel like getting a free win off of a card that levels in deck is kind of problematic so i am happy that see now levels slower you might need to go a little bit more all in on actually being able to level up the morgana this, but yeah, ultimately, this is entirely meaningless. It really does not matter. Any fire spitter with Morgana and alter to unity? Hell yeah. Yeah, make, make Morgana 5-5. Five, five. I actually did like that a lot. Alter to unity is great for Morgana. Okay, uh, yeah, still a still very good card. Will still be played a lot. I'd be very surprised to see Morgana gone from the, uh, from the meta. The suppression used to stop all spellcasting and now stops all non-curse spellcasting. So I talked about this yesterday too, but my issue very often... And I'm going to take an example, is that if you play a deck with a low spell count, usually suppression shouldn't really matter. We were playing Kale Nar on stream. This is a deck I yoinked from an opponent I played against. I played like five games with it, and then I realized, oh wait, my deck doesn't actually have any spells. I literally looked at the deck list like five games later, I was like, wait, where's my interaction? Where's literally anything at all? And then I realized when I played against Morgana, and she shackled me. Oh no, it wasn't Morgana that shackled me. It was first, they suppressed me with like the Inquisitor and Magical Feathering. I'm like, yeah, this doesn't really matter because I don't have spells, right? I'm just going to let the suppression sit here. I'm not going to care. And then Morgana comes down and shackles your big unit. And then before you can get your unit back, you need to play suppression and then the shackle. That's no longer the case. You can just let the suppression sit in your hand if you have a low spell count deck. You play the, uh, the shackles because, you know, you can just play them even if you have suppression hand. And you're going to be good. And that, that's really, really nice. Not being forced to pay this cost first to just get your units back is fantastic. Uh, necessary, necessary change, in my opinion. Mace Seeker Inquisitor goes from 3 2 to a 2 2 with no tough, loses the tough keyword. Interesting thing about this is that usually you kind of go up in mana or up in board presence tempo when you make your opponent play a curse. Uh, if we take the, uh, I mean, we could take the Mace Seeker Inquisitor for an example. This used to be a four mana three two with tough. Now a three two with tough, I would argue, is worth three mana. If you can just drop it on the field, that's worth three mana. Your opponent needs to play pay two mana to get their unit back. So basically, you go up, 
basically you play a one mana mate seeker inquisitor because of that it's the same with morgana right a five mana unit you make your opponent pay four mana morgana is a one mana unit but now because you're paying four mana for a two two challenger and your opponent needs to pay two you're basically paying two mana for a two two challenger i know it's not exactly how it works it's not really how mana costs work how tempo works but that is a, a easy way to look at the reason the mate seeker inquisitor was strong was because you were able to print it in Mordecai's and Morgana. That was like its main thing. You gave it Deathless. It would suppress your opponent almost for free because everything was just so efficient. But the big part was getting board control on turn three, uh, on turn four. As a 3 2 tough, you would usually just pick off one unit. And then, you know, the Mace Seeker Inquisitor had Deathless, so they would get it back. It's just, it was really good for board control. And I feel like as a 2 2, that's not going to really be the case anymore. Uh, the board control aspect of this is gone, and it's basically just like, a unit that gets summoned to give your opponent suppression. That's a Broly. Yeah, I'm very happy with this nerf. Very happy. This guy was an absolute asshole. I was so tired of playing against this guy. I I don't even... I, like. But it was in combination with this, right? The fact that you couldn't play your shackles unless you got rid of the suppression first. So these two chains together, I think will just make the game much less exhausting and taxing to play. Fantastic changes. Hey Spike, instead of always giving a husk, now only gives a husk if Evelyn started in your deck. Um, great, great, great change. I am happy that a two mana card that deals three damage exists. Because I think that's a good space and tool for Shadow Isle to have. But the husk just sometimes randomly winning the game because you got a spell shield or elusive was disgusting. Uh, that should have never been a thing. The hate spike change makes sense, but the text is, for it is so messy. I think it's a little bit like... It's a little bit messy. I agree, but I actually love this text. I love this angle because we've never really had this. I think there are some cards that said like, do this if your deck started with X. Like Priest of the Desert Light only does this if your deck started with six unique champions. Hate Spike, having this condition of Evelyn being in your deck, I think it's just like for, for balance, I think it's fantastic. It's a specific card. Yeah, but it's in the Evelyn region. I, I, think, it's, I think it works really well. It looks messy, but I think if you play the game, if you play Runeterra, you can appreciate this. Oh, you can remove the word and. Yeah, kill an ally to deal three to unit. Dot. Or period, whatever. If Evelyn started in your deck, summon a random. Yeah, that works. That would that would look less messy. I agree. You, they can remove the word and and just start a new sentence. I, I, I guess I agree. That would that would be less messy. I, I, I'm happy for the change. I, Evelyn, Evelyn you could use some love. Evelyn hasn't been very strong. So you got one cool card in Siren Song, and that turned out to not even be like an Evelyn card, really. People just use it with like Buildswater Targon. So poor Eve, man. Eve deserved better. This uh this keeps Eve playable while nerfing decks like Morgana, Mordekaiser, Viego, Elder Dragon, that kind of stuff. Good change. Yumi goes from 2-2 to 2-1. This is a start to toning down elusive, but I I want more. This is not a goff. Elusives should not be tanky. Even like a, a plus one health, I think, that, that grows every turn. Awful. So bad, man. So can you believe that Hate Spike used to be one mana? I, I mean, it dealt two. It used to be a one mana deal two, and then it made a two mana deal three. Disgusting. Unbelievable. <laughs> I'm really tired of elusive decks that just don't care about anything. They play stuff like Skip, they buff their units a little bit, and then they bring it down. I get that. I mean, I think it's. Yeah. We think that Yumi Elusive hold down an important spot in the meta by pouncing on overly greedy decks. I mean, honestly, like, screw that, man. There's other stuff. Overly greedy decks make pirates playable over elusives. I, I actually kind of enjoy playing against aggro most of the time. If there is, like, a clever aggro deck, I can appreciate that. But that's also because I really like Targon, which is funny because Yumi is a Targon card. But, yeah, I, I would love for uh, elusives to just not be a thing. And I think most players are really tired of elusives always somehow being in the meta and always somehow just finding the most frustrating way to play the game and win games. Um, I'm done with it. Bring back sharp side. And then we're going to the buff. So Elder Dragon becomes a 12-12 instead of a 10-10. <laughs> this is done because the nerfs to boons obviously hit the decks that actually want to summon Elder Dragon pretty hard. So this is still like, overall, I think Elder Dragon ends up with less health because they would normally be a 13-13 or 14-14. And now they don't get any health. So, yeah. Uh, this doesn't matter, but I'm glad that they looked at it and still gave something to Elder Dragon because decks that 
aren't stupid by only playing one Elder Dragon for the region, but I actually want to play him, uh, I think this is fine. Uh, it's good that I looked at it. I, I just appreciate the thought, really. Unless the Gallant goes from 7-6 seven, to 7-7, seven, seven, same thing as before. This deck was only playable in the more all-in Elder Dragon decks that actually care about summoning the unit. So this being a 7-7, seven, seven, I appreciate the thought. You know, make it a little bit more durable. It's good. A Druid Artificer goes from a 5-3 to a 5-4. I still think this card is pretty unplayable. But it's nice that sometimes it trades like 2 for 1, I guess. You, you challenge something, you kill it. Then your opponent uses a card to kill the Adroid Artificer. Um, I, I just feel... Okay, so I mean, this is kind of looking ahead of things, right? Because we have some mirror changes coming up. I really feel like the Adroid Artificer... And Plunder, with Samira in general, is only good with Buildswater. And the Buildswater Noxus decks go way faster, and they don't want to play a 5-mana five 5-4 five that sometimes gets value. I really like the thought of playing Fraljord Noxus, but I just don't think it's a real deck. Even after all the changes, I don't think it's real. If it is real, I will be happy about it. I just don't see it being real right now. And that, that type of deck... Goes a little bit slower, and that is the type of deck that Adroid Artificer will be great in. So if that deck can somehow exist, then maybe this, this card can live the dream. But right now, I just don't see it. The Angel... Yeah, okay, okay. Angel, Angel is a good one, but uh, Angel is also a 5 cost, right? So uh, either way, you're, you're going to feel awkward playing this card. Friar Nox, Ashley Blanc... Yeah, yeah. It, no, I mean, see, that's a different deck, right? I'm talking specifically about Plunder. If you want to Plunder, Nox is Freljord, that does go a little bit slower, and it does want to play a little bit more for value, which a Droid Artificer would be great in. I just don't think that deck is there. I just don't think that you can make that work consistently. The problem with Samira right now is as I exist, too many removal. So I think you're right, but it depends on the deck. Again, for Buildswater, Nox, I don't think that matters. But for, uh, for Samira and Freljord, it does kind of matter because you have a much harder time actually activating the plunder. So yes, before Samira even gets the hidden to get the flyer sometimes, instead of doing it on the plunder summon, she's already dead. And that, that is the issue. In, in, in Buildswater Noxus, you can easily like, okay, I'll go to the Samira. In Buildswater Noxus, you can easily play like a warning shot and then you have Samira enabled, right? That, that's doable. But in Failure Nox, you can't do that. There is no warning shot. There is no, like, make it rain or something. There, there's, there's your stylish shot. That, that's it. There's, like, Tusk Raider, but that's a two-mana unit, so you can't play that. You have two two-drops. Yeah, but that's a two-drop, so you need to pay unit mana for that. So if you wanted to go two-drop to activate Samira, you would have to play Samira on turn four. And Samira is, like, best on turn two, right? Because then she's a two-two with quick attack. But you don't play for Samira, you play for Sedwani? Sure, I don't disagree. But the flare is a big deal. Flare, like, Flare is insanely good for anything that deck wants to do. But it's just, it's hard to get that Flare with Fraljord Samira. That's all I'm saying. If you want that Flare, and you can just have it sit in your hand as, like, an activation for whenever you need a big plunder, it's fantastic. It's just not easy to get. So Flare, uh, with that change, Samira becoming a plunder instead of a summon, and Flare going down to one I think it's a good change. I think it's fantastic. But there is some awkwardness in it. Even though there is awkwardness, it's still better than a two-mana Flare, right? Uh, don't get me wrong, that, <laughs> that is still a buff. I'm just saying there is awkwardness, and I don't know how to fix that in deck building. That being said, though, I will be playing Samira today to uh, hopefully figure something out, and it is mostly going to be because of the Dashing Dandy. I think this card is awesome. I don't think it's good. I also think it's still awkward because you have to activate it through Plunder, but it used to be a 3-cost 1-4 Plunder, got me plus 3 plus 0. Now it's a 4-cost 2-4 Plunder, double my power. This is an actual game-ending bomb now. This used to always be a 3-mana 4-4. Now it's technically a 4-mana 4-4. But the dream is much bigger. You can now buff this with an Omen Hawk or a Yadulski Snow Dog once. And suddenly, instead of a 3-4, it'll be... Well, it also gets plus 1 HP. It'll be a 6-5. Then you have the Daring Demolisher to activate again. 12 attack. We actually did that yesterday when we played against the, the elusive Ephemeral deck, Gwen Zed. We had like a 12 attack dashing dandy or something, and it just won us the game. So I, I love what this card does. <laughs> but again, it's awkward. It's a four mana card. Uh, it needs to be built around a little bit. But if you do, you have a potential game manner. I think the card has potential. Okay, uh, let's go back to the top because we looked at Samira real fast. We got the Blimp Pack Poacher. Again, I want to give a shout out to Brian Koplek for signing my, my Victor image right there who watched me react to the Blimp Pack Poacher when it was revealed multiple times because I fell in love with this guy. The animation on Blimp Pack Poacher is actually just like 
one of the best in the game. It grabs the unit in front of it, pops out this balloon, and then floats back to the board. It is beautiful. Love it. Uh, anyway, this user only capture a unit if it has six or less power. Now it always captures. You can you can make this capture a uh, 200 attack Atakan if you want. This guy just like plops himself in front of Atakan and says, yep, you're coming with me. And then he takes them and you don't die. That's pretty great. This guy's a hero. I don't know why they make this, this these guys out to be the bad guys, right? You have like the uh, the creatures from the jungle with Nidalee and they have Big Game Tycoon, this guy, the all-terrain trooper. Let's be honest, they're the real heroes. They're, they're the ones that actually keep you safe. The vulnerable guy, yeah, they help you stay alive by taking out your opponent's threat. This guy keeps you alive by, again, capturing a big threat. And then you have the big game tycoon actually allowing you to win. I don't know, man. They, they're the heroes, not Nidalee. Nidalee's kind of a jerk. Uh, screaming mango them in my face all the time. I don't even know what that means. I don't even like... Actually, I do like mangoes. Anyway. <laughs> Kaisa is now a 5-5 five five instead of a 4-4. Four four. So they did this in preparation for my cosplay. I'm going to be cosplaying Kaisa, Star Guardian Kaisa, in the upcoming week. Maybe two weeks. We'll see. And <laughs> that's why they buffed her, you know, in, in preparation for that. I'm, I'm going to be playing Kaisa decks all day. So it's good that she's a little bit better than before. All right, anyway. <laughs> uh, Tomb Raider Bra Bra from 3-2 to a 3-3. Listen, Bra Bra is adorable. I think her text is cool. I think Lucky Finds are pretty interesting. Uh, but this card is still garbage. It's still trash. It's just bad. There's just nothing that this really works with. It's once per turn. That's just bad. I'm I'm sad about it too, chat. Bra Bra stinky garbo. Yeah, you said it, Dragon Master. All right. Uh, yeah, Dragon Master review, uh, <laughs> reviewed that one. That's how I feel. She's a queen. Yeah, I I think Bra Bra is cute. It's just her card is bad. So Nila. I played Nila deck in the Invitational. And I can tell you that this, this, this feels really good. It's one card, but sometimes one card is all it takes. I don't really think Nila needed a buff. Nila is fine, you know? And if they do buff her, though, I'm glad that it's this, because you can't really touch anything else on her text. She has Brash. She is a 2-3. You can't make her a 3-3 or something, right? You can't make her... Well, would she be better as a 3-2? No, she would be worse. I think she would be worse as a 3-2, because she dies to Mystic Shot before she can attack. Um... Yeah, maybe this is a Path of Champions buff. I don't really play Nila in Path. I haven't even tried her once, I think, so... I don't know. But this is, this is nice. Does this change anything about her? Yes. Mostly, the decks that don't play Sunken Temple now actually have a way to level her. I know one card doesn't seem like that much, but for example, we have the Misfortune Nila deck that does get, like, Slipstream, so sometimes you do get there, and then that's, like, that one turn that you need. This, this, like... I know you run card draw effects, but sometimes you're at 14, and then you would need two more turns of natural card draw to actually level her, but now it's only one turn, so you can actually play for that. This is a bigger deal than it looks. Do you think it would be better if her build sweater updraft card had brash? It would be better, sure, but it would still be bad. I would not play that card. It's, I know, up, updrafting your entire hand and then only drawing two, that's, it's a stat stick with no keyword. I think it's bad. Udir goes from 5-4 to 5-5. Five, five. I love this change because Udir cares about brawling and punching people. So being a little more durable makes it more likely that you get that stance and actually get the hit in. And then you give him regen, right? The, the fact that Udir can get regen is a big deal. Every point of health matters because you can get it back. Very, very, very good change. I, does this make Udir playable? I think there are other issues with the Udir deck and i don't think one health fixes that it's the awkwardness of using stances sometimes and your opponent just sitting on removal until you try to commit a stance i like this change i i'm an udir enjoyer but ultimately uh you guys are gonna have to wait a little bit until you see a card that might fix udir a little bit better i already hinted at it a little bit and let me tell you it's a good one okay bushquack trap gives vulnerable this round now just grants vulnerable i played with this card once I was super proud of this Rennington Nidalee deck that I made like six months ago. I was like, hell yeah, dude. I, I'm onto something here. And then I realized that I was transferring my units on my opponent's attacking turn. I gave vulnerable, and then I couldn't even use it when I wanted to attack with Rennington. It's, it's dumb, man. Now it isn't terrible in Path of Champions. That's true, because this is in the Nidalee starting deck. However, 
Nidalee got nerfed because you used to run last chapter on Nidalee, and with her power, you transform her. You refill mana like multiple times because it keeps summoning copies of herself if you like transform her to a leveling or whatever. Now that's a play effect. It's yeah, I, I think it's still I, it's probably still like very very good. But last chapter Italy was disgusting, but you just kept getting your mana back. It still doesn't make Renekton good. No, it won't. It won't. There is the uh, the sun disc change though. Uh, I can go over that because you know they're they're both landmarks. <laughs> so. With this buried sun disc, I had to read this like two times until I understood what it meant. But this basically means that the sun disc will count down automatically by nine if you summon it later, if you've already leveled a champion. So let's say you level a zero without the sun disc on board, you then summon the sun disc minus nine. Over a year ago, I tried to play sun disc Fraljord with Renekton and Nasus, and that was like, it was bad, right? It wasn't great, but there was something there. There was a concept there. So I wonder maybe maybe this makes it a little more more playable. I actually think you can go like um, two Azir, two Renekton, two Nez or something. And then you try to play this with the Rock Bear Shepherd. Something like that. It's, uh, it, it's a good change. I don't think in Mona Shrima, you're going to be playing more than one Sun Disc, though. So this is just like, hey, you can now explore with Sun Disc outside of Shrima. All right. And then we have General of the Dunes, 4 4 to 5 4. Um, one interesting thing. Is that Daybreak actually didn't do great into the meta. They're like they have big stats, but somehow formidables would just be bigger anyway. So now that that kinda got nerfed with Elder Dragon Egg, like the primary uh, formidable that got nerfed, maybe that makes General of the Dunes a little bit better. I don't think it's great though. I still think this is pretty bad. It's like it's it, it looks good, right? It, it looks like it would be a good card. It's just when you actually try to play it, everything kind of needs to line up perfectly for this to actually do anything. I hope I'm wrong, because I, I, I like Leona decks. I like Diana decks. I hope to be wrong, but it, to me, this doesn't seem like it would make a meta deck. Nami goes from play six spells to play five spells to level up. This is a big deal. I'm expecting to see a lot of Nami, especially with Mastery also going to two mana. I feel like Nami is a contender again. One spell is, is a big deal, because that one spell that you would normally need to level her, now instead just buffs your unit by plus two plus one. That's an entire extra buff. This is, this is a really big deal. Samira, Master Yi. I think those are actually the two main cards that Nami would be playable with. Okay, this doesn't matter. Delve now costs one if you have all world runes. Whatever. So we talked about Samira. Belly of Imitation. Instead of four costs, it's now a three cost, but does not retain buffs. I hate this. Oh. I really liked Valley of Imitation because of Big Game Tycoon just giving you like a thousand attack units. That's gone. You can't do it anymore. It just like, it just transforms into whatever unit you play. So there's no more Nakutak shenanigans. There's no Big Game Tycoon shenanigans. There's nothing. So I, yeah, I think this card's pretty dead, unfortunately. Even if it looks like it got buff, right? It's one mana cheaper, but it doesn't retain buff. So the, 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 the excitement of this card is gone entirely. It is better for Shellfog, yeah, because Shellfog doesn't get buffed. Shellfolk, man. It's always Shellfolk somehow breaking the game. Yeah, I'll go about the predict change last. Uh, okay, Divine Whirlwind goes to six costs, but deals two again. I think this is a good change. Weirdly enough, I think this makes the card better. <laughs> because you're mostly using this in a Sunken Temple deck, and when you're updrafting, and if this card gets updrafted, and it costs one less, it's really good, and you really care about the burn damage. Those decks that you play this in, like the updraft decks, don't actually have great ways to end the game. It's all like just burn damage and there's little bits and pieces of like a, uh, a Nila hitting through Brash or a Nila level 2 hitting or uh, Fikrash dealing 2 damage. It's all like really, really small amounts of damage. So this dealing one more again is really nice to actually have enough burn to finish the game. It's necessary. It, I think it makes the card better for those decks especially and that's like the only decks where it really gets played so i um uh, i'm glad that i did this okay and then we have master Yi going from three to two cost don't be fooled master Yi is bugged his level two form still somehow costs three mana i don't know how that happened it's supposed to cost two though and that is a huge change now i'm gonna i'm gonna say something and you're all gonna be really disappointed but the reason this is good is not because you can now play the Master Yi dream of leveling him up, protecting him, buffing him, and Master Yi taking out the board. No. 
It's not that. Master Yi will never level. If Master Yi levels, you've already won the game. The reason it's good is because you can now discount your cards one turn earlier. That That's it. That's literally it. You play them on turn two and your cards are cheaper earlier. That's... <laughs> that, that, that's literally it. Uh, kind of sad. Good change for Path, yeah. I, uh, I think Master Yi might be a lot better in Path now. Yeah. Yeah, Master Yi War Mother, like, unironically, I, I think that would probably be pretty good. I think there is a Master Yi Lissandro deck somewhere that just cares about, like, discounting your, your ramp spells or whatever and your War Mother. I actually think that that would be pretty good. I didn't think that way. I thought about him stacking earlier. And yeah, that's what I thought, too. It's like, oh, you have one turn earlier to start leveling up your Yi. You have one turn earlier to get him on the board and bank mana for next turn to start protecting him. But no, it's just discounting spells. This is why Master Yi is so good with Samira and with Nami. Because he makes some of the one mana cards, he makes them zero. And then it's like much easier to activate Flow, activate Nami, etc. So that, that that's where Master Yi has landed for me. Um... It's pretty unfair because I played in the Invitational, so I have some insight. And I can tell you that Master Yi looked good. Uh, but it's mostly because of this. Did Riot mention Yi too? No, it's just a bug. Like, it's not supposed to be that way. So it'll get changed. It might be you play him one turn earlier and he dies one turn earlier. Uh, yeah, he dies to Quietus now, doesn't he? <laughs> Yi dies to Quietus now. No, I don't know. I think if you play him on two, you're, you're usually pretty happy, generally. I, I think this is a good change. It, it, it's, it's a huge buff. It's one mana less and at the cost of one H or one attack, and that's fine. Okay, so the predict change. This is the big one. This is weird because this is a mechanic that's been in the game for like two years, and we've always known it to work a certain way. And now they changed it. One funny tidbit is that Riot actually mentioned while we were talking to the devs, and they said that, yeah, surprisingly, this change was actually much easier to manage. So, like, the deck not shuffling was actually easier to implement than the deck shuffling every time. So, they, they wanted to do this for consistency, but it was, like, a nice little thing that, hey, this is much easier to manage. So I, I thought it was funny. Like, yeah, maybe it should have been like that from the start now, right? Um, first of all, we'll talk about why this is good or what decks this is good for. Number one is Lurk. With Lurk, you can now, before you attack, call the pack a Rek'Sai, put it on top, attack, get plus two, your attack ends, and then you predict. You have a Snapjaw Swarm. You know, you put something on top. The Rek'Sai is under it. Your opponent's attacking turn. You play that Snapjaw Swarm, and Rek'Sai is still there from the call to pack. It's pretty insane. I think this is, a, this is pretty huge for Lurk. I don't know how much it actually go, comes into play, but when it does, it's a big deal. It increases consistency. The other thing is that you can't shuffle away Flash Bombs and Puff Caps anymore. And if you're the one predicting with Nora, you also don't shuffle away your Mysterious Portals. You shuffle away your Chimes, but they're kind of like spread across the deck anyway, just like Puff Caps. Puff Caps is a little bit different, though, because you can kind of see how many Puff Caps you're going to draw if your opponent plays Karina, and you're like, oh, I only drew two, uh, drew, drew three, and I'm not dead, so I'm not going to use my Predict. And if you did get enough Shrooms where it would be lethal in a couple of draws, you can predict to hopefully have better odds and not draw as many Shrooms. It's a good change because, again, it increases consistency and agency where you know what to do because your deck isn't shuffled. You know what you're up against. You know what to expect. And that's, I think that, that like enhances player skill and how you play certain things. It's good. The other thing, though, Fallen Feline and Secret Keeper. These are the only two cards that specifically say we shuffle stuff into the bottom 10 cards of the deck. But what used to happen is you shuffle cards into the bottom 10 cards of your deck you predict once, your deck is shuffled, and then you could top deck that level 2 champion at any moment. Right? Um, that's no longer possible. The Mona Shurima Rally 2. You're right. The I mean, it doesn't specifically say, but the Mona Shurima 10 mana card that summons a level 3 Renekton and Nasus used to always be the final card of the Mona Shurima Emperor's deck. You can no longer predict after you've leveled 3 Azir to draw it or predict into it. That's, that's no longer possible. I think that matters less because it's a rare scenario where that actually happens. But yes, it is a, it is a thing that could be relevant sometimes. Big thing is Fallen Feline. Now, for Fallen Feline, I'm going to be completely honest. Fallen Feline is a disgusting card. Fallen Feline is very broken. I was actually talking to Ruben, and we were talking about, like, how much mana would a main deckable Hexite Crystal be? The two-mana card right now at fast speed that deals two to the enemy board and the Nexus. And I think we said six or seven mana. It had to be six or seven mana for that card to be fair. Fast speed board clear. 
And you get that card for free sometimes, and you can print it. Yeah, what's up, Grappler? I'm doing all right. How was the, uh, how was the Universal Studios? So, uh, Fall of Fear Line, broken card. I think it deserved to get nerfed. But Secret Keeper is not a good card. Secret Keeper is a meme card that got hit indirectly. Now, I've seen people say uh, maybe Secret Keeper should not shuffle into the bottom 10 cards of the deck. Maybe Secret Keeper should have a condition that it shuffles your deck if you've predicted X times or something. I don't know. I think what I would like to see is just double the amount of champions that Secret Keeper shuffles. Let Secret Keeper shuffle four champions instead. So you have like a better chance of hitting it with Predict anyway. That, that, that's what I would like to see. Just like a bigger number of champions that get shuffled into your deck. And then you can deal, still do like shenanigans with it. Like that, that's better for like Kingfisher and whatnot. I think that'd be cool. But yeah, the card is ultimate. Like if it stays the way it is with this predict change, it's an awful card. And you're never going to hit those level two champions. It's really sad. That's, uh, that, that's, that's the predict change. And then we have a bunch of Path of Champion stuff that I'm not going to go over right now. The skins are very good. I am going to be working on a Blade Dance guide, unfortunately, because of the sub goal marathon stream thing I did. So that will be coming out when the Eternal meta goes live. And then we have Trinomir. I, yeah, Trinomir. We have, I think this skin is very good. This Jarvan skin is my favorite. Jarvan definitely needed a skin. And I think the Warring Kingdom Jarvan is actually one of his most popular, or one of the most popular skins in League of Legends, period. I don't get the Trinomir, though. Like, why don't we give skins to, like, popular champ? Why wasn't it Rek'Sai? Why wasn't it Ari or something? Well, I guess Ari just got a skin. I'm so, I'm so confused about a, a Trinomir skin. How has Rek'Sai not gotten a skin? Like, Lurk is one of the most popular decks. Trinomir was in cinematic? Yeah, I mean, cool. But who cares? <laughs> he's, an, he's, a, he's a boring card in Rune Terra. I mean, gorgeous skins. It's not really for me. Boring Kingdoms is not really my thing. But uh, I, I enjoyed the Jarvan skin most of all. And that was it. Ultimately, I think a pretty great patch. But there is obviously a bit of a lower player base for Rune Terror right now. So the question is going to be, who's actually going to experiment with this? Who's actually going to make new decks and break the meta? I guess it'll be up to us. And of course, Grappler, when Grappler's back home, we're, we're going to be the, one to, uh, the ones to release new decks. I don't know if Roly, I don't know if Roly has streamed since then, but uh, we'll, we'll brew something up. I'm going to be playing some Samira right now, and it's mostly because of Dash and Danny. I love this change. I think there is something here with Dash and Danny. That's what I'm going to try. Great patch. I'd rate, I'd, I'd rate this patch so far. I've played it one day. I'd rate it a, uh, like a 7 out of 10, 7.5 out of 10. I feel like the stuff that did get buffed, isn't something that is overly frustrating to play against most of the time. Maybe Nami. But even Nami, I feel like it's pretty easy to contain. The stuff that needed to get nerfed got nerfed. Maybe Mordekaiser should have gotten hit. But with Elder Dragon and Mage Seeker, which were like the primary Mordekaiser deck, maybe that's just enough. So good patch. I'm overall very happy.